Supra-segmental features, like tone and stress, are language universals, but not all languages use them in the same way. For example, tone can be applied at either the word level or at the sentence level. Tone, which is often compared to the music of a language, refers to situations where a high or low sound impacts meaning or intent. Languages that apply tone at the word level, like Vietnamese or Chinese, for example, are referred to as tonal languages. In Vietnamese, the phonemes m and a combine to form the morpheme ma. Then, the addition of one of the five tones in Vietnamese turns ma into five totally different words. Words that to a native speaker don't sound or mean the same. As native speakers of American English, you know that tone doesn't work at the word level in your language. However, speakers of American English can turn a sentence into a question with a change in tone. She brought home a stray dog becomes she brought home a stray dog? Stress is another supersegmental that can be applied at the word level or at the sentence level. Speakers of American English do both. We know that stress at the word level makes some syllables longer and stronger than others. When it is misapplied and the emphasis is put on the wrong syllable, that can mark a speaker as non-native. Correctly placed stress is important at the sentence level too. In fact, all languages fit into one of two categories. Syllable-timed languages give all syllables in a phrase or sentence more or less equal stress. Spanish and Italian fit into this group. Languages with some strong syllables and others weak are called stress-timed languages. American English fits into this category. Imagine running your fingers along a string of beads of the same size and shape. No single bead stands out. Now imagine that you are standing on the curb of a busy urban street. In front of you is a line of cars, all the same size, all the same distance apart, all traveling at the same speed. If you close your eyes, what do you hear? These two experiences might help you conceptualize a syllable-timed language. Now imagine that the beads on the string are not all the same size and that they are strung at random. As you run your fingers along the strand, some beads stand out because of their larger size. Put yourself back on that busy street, but this time the traffic consists of motorcycles, cars, and buses traveling in a random order. If you close your eyes as they pass, how is it different from what you heard when all the cars and their speeds were the same? This is the impression created by a stress time language. Let's look at some examples. Read each line below with the idea that you only get two beats to complete the entire statement. Run away. Run away. Running away. He's running away. Here's another example that should fit into two beats. Easy do. Easy to do easy to redo. It's easy to redo. It's easy to redo them. This example fits into a three-beat pattern. Pick, pair, me. Pick a pair for me. Pick up a pair for me. Please pick up a pair for me. Of course, as native speakers of American English, we sometimes break this rule. If someone says, I have had enough, with equal stress on all syllables, we understand that the speaker is being emphatic. This pattern is used to abrupt effect when we are angry or impatient. This happens because of L1 interference from a syllable-timed language. An English language learner can also sound abrupt or angry for no clear reason. This is why teachers must be aware of this supersegmental as a potential source of error and how to address it. Rhymes and songs used so often in the early childhood classroom present a wonderful opportunity to model this aspect of English to both ELLs and native speakers alike. Have your drum or tambourine beat on the desk if that's what you have, and test this idea out on one of your favorite kids' songs. 